much anymore. Not since that fateful night a few weeks ago that still haunts my dreams. I used to love the convenience of having hot food arrive right at my doorstep. But all of that changed after a creepy encounter with the pizza delivery guy. It started off as any other lazy Friday evening. My roommate was out of town, so I decided to treat myself to a pepperoni pizza and cheesy breadsticks, along with a six-pack of beer. I placed the order online and kicked back on the couch to watch TV while I waited for my food. About 30 minutes later, the doorbell rang. When I opened it, a tall, skinny man holding a hot pizza bag stood there staring at me. He looked to be in his early twenties with greasy brown hair poking out from under his uniform hat. One pepperoni pizza and breadsticks. He droned in a nasally voice. Yup, that's me, I reply, reaching for the food. But instead of handing the food over, the delivery guy just kept standing there, looking me up and down with an intense gaze. After a few painfully awkward moments, I asked if everything was okay. You live here all alone? He asked. His question gave me an uneasy feeling, but I nodded slowly. Yep, just me tonight. So can I have my pizza now? In a hurry. There's no need to rush. He said with the unsettling grin. Why don't we go inside and chat for a bit first? Alarm bells were ringing loudly in my head at this point. Mm, I don't think so. I stammered. Just give me the pizza so I can pay you. But he didn't budge, still blocking the doorway with his wiry frame. Come on, it'll be fun, he goaded. We can throw on a movie and get to know each other. His words oozed with creepy persistence. I stood frozen for a moment, trying to calculate my next move. Before I could respond, he barged forward into my apartment, forcing me to stumble backward. Whoa, man. You can't just come in here. I protested loudly. But he paid no attention as he set the food down and walked slowly around my living room, inspecting the surroundings. You have a nice little place here, he commented. Very cozy. I felt my chest tightening with panic as I fumbled for my phone. But with lightning quick reflexes, he snatched it away before I could dial 911. No, no need for that. He scolded. Like I said, I just want to hang out as friends. His words dripped with menace. Summoning my courage, I managed to keep my voice steady. I don't want to be your friend. I just want you to leave. In a flash, his hand was around my throat, slamming me against the wall. His breath was hot and sour against my face. Don't be like that. I just got here, he leered. Fear coursed through me as his grip tightened. Thinking fast, I brought my knee up hard into his crotch. He howled in pain and let me go just long enough for me to break free from the wall. I sprinted toward the door, but before I got there, I felt his weight crash into me as he tackled me to the floor. He climbed on top of me, straddling my torso to pin me down. I thrashed violently beneath him, but he was too strong. He pulled a rag and a bottle of chloroform from his pocket. Panic consumed me. With every bit of adrenaline, fueled strength I had, I managed to buck him off of me. I scrambled to my feet just as he lunged for me again. Holding up my fists, I dodged his grasp and landed a punch squarely in his nose. Blood spurted everywhere. Staggering in pain, he screamed at me. You'll pay for this, but I didn't stick around to find out. I ran outside to safety and called the cops. They never did catch the guy, but since that night, I only order food from places I know well, and I never open the door without asking plenty of screening questions first. You just never know when an ordinary pizza delivery could turn into your worst nightmare. It was a Friday night, like any other. My roommate Jeff and I were hanging out in our apartment, debating what to order for dinner. We were both feeling lazy and didn't want to cook. So naturally, pizza was the obvious choice. Let's get it from Tony's Pizzeria, Jeff suggested. They're pretty quick with their delivery time. I agreed. Their pizza was always hot and tasty. I pulled out my phone, called them up, and placed an order for a large supreme pizza and some garlic knots. The girl on the phone said it would be about 30 minutes. 
Jeff and I cracked open a couple of beers and flip on the TV while we waited for our food. About 35 minutes later, there was a knock at the door. I jumped up to answer it, expecting to see a bored college kid holding our pizza. But when I opened the door, I was met by a tall, skinny man with greasy hair and pockmarked skin. He looked to be in his 40s and had an unsettling grin on his face. Pizza delivery for... He checked the receipt, Mike. That's me, I said, surprised by this man's appearance, but trying not to judge. He handed me the pizza box and bag of knots. I noticed his hands were filthy and his fingernails were cracked and dirty. That'll be $16.50, he said. His voice was raspy, like he had been a lifelong smoker. I quickly paid the man and added a small tip, anxious for him to leave. Thanks, I said, grabbing the food and starting to close the door. My pleasure. He slurred, stopping the door with his hand. His eyes bored into mine for an uncomfortable amount of time before he turned and shambled off. Something about his demeanor creeped me out. I lock the door and peer out the peephole, watching him get into his rusted-out Camry and drive off into the night. Weird pizza guy, huh? Jeff remarked as I set the food down on the coffee table. Yeah, he gave me the creeps. I laughed, shaking off the uneasy feeling the man had given me. Jeff and I dug into our pizza, which was just as delicious as always. Over the next couple hours, we polished off the pie and several more beers while enjoying some mindless TV. As it got late, Jeff headed to his room to call it a night. I decided to stay up a bit longer to watch a movie. Right as I was getting ready to put something on, there was another knock at the door. I froze. Who could be knocking at this hour? I crept over to the door and looked through the peephole. My heart dropped when I saw the scraggly pizza delivery man standing there. How did he know where I lived? And why had he come back? I know you're in there, Mike. He growled through the door. Just want to talk for a minute. I stood paralyzed, panicking about what to do. Go away, I shouted, trying to sound intimidating. He jiggled the doorknob aggressively. Come on, Mike, just let me in real quick. I left something here earlier. My mind raced with terrifying thoughts about what this deranged man could want. Was he planning to rob me, hurt me, worse? I'm calling the cops if you don't leave, I yell. You'll regret this, Mike. He spat angrily. The doorknob kept rattling as he tried to force his way inside. Terrified, I ran to get my phone and dialed 911 with trembling fingers. I explained breathlessly that the strange delivery man had come back and was trying to get into my apartment. The operator assured me that officers were on their way. The man must have heard me on the phone, because the rattling stopped suddenly. I heard him stomp away and glance out the window just in time to see him speed off in his Camry, blowing through stop signs as he disappeared into the night. An eternity later, flashing blue and red lights illuminated my window. I let out a massive sigh of relief and went to meet the police outside. I told them the whole freaky story, and they took down the pizza place's information to try tracking the man down. After the cops left, I barely slept a wink. Every little noise made me jump as I lay awake, replaying the terrifying encounter in my mind. I kept peeking out into the darkness, half expecting to see the man lurking around outside. The next morning, I hesitantly told Jeff about the creepy pizza guy coming back. He was shocked, having slept through the entire ordeal. We decided to call Tony's Pizzeria to figure out who the heck had delivered to our house. The confused manager informed us that they had no deliveries to our address last night. He checked their system and said no orders had been placed after 7 p.m. A chill ran down my spine as I realized this deranged man had no connection to Tony's. We double-checked that the door was locked and jammed a chair under the handle just to be safe. I even went out and bought some mace to have on hand. But thankfully, we never saw that terrifying pizza delivery man again. The cops figured he was just some transient who wandered into town looking for places to rob. Nevertheless, I'm much more cautious when opening the door these days. Because you never know who might be on the other side holding a pizza box and wearing a friendly grin.
My name's Jack, and I'm a pizza delivery guy. Been doing this job for a few years now to pay my way through college. The pay's not great, but the tips usually make up for it. I don't mind driving around town dropping off pies to hungry customers. Most nights are pretty uneventful. But there was this one delivery I took last week that still gives me chills when I think about it. It started off like any other night. I was scheduled to work the closing shift from 4 p.m. to midnight. We were pretty slow, only getting a couple orders per hour. I spent most of my time sitting around the shop, chatting with the other drivers or scrolling through my phone. Around 10.30 p.m., the phone rang. My co-worker Leah answered it. From the sound of her voice, it seemed to be a prank call. But she took down the info anyway and handed me the slip. Weird order for you. Someone wants a large supreme pie sent way out on Victoria Road. The dress doesn't seem right, but the customer insisted, said they'd give a big tip if you could find the place. I looked at the address. 43242 Victoria Road. That was out in the middle of nowhere, at least a 15-minute drive from the shop. We didn't usually deliver that far out of town, and the address didn't seem right. Probably just some teenagers pranking us to get free food. But an odd feeling in my gut told me to take it anyway. Maybe they really were planning to give a huge tip. I decided I'd drive out there, and if I couldn't find the place, I'd just turn back. I grabbed the hot pizza and headed out to my car, punching the address into my GPS. The map took me out of town into the winding rural roads. There were no street lights, just pitch black either side of the road. An eerie fog crept over the pavement, reducing visibility to only a few feet in front of me. I kept driving slowly, looking for any signs of a house or driveway on Victoria Road. But there was nothing except woods as far as I could see in my headlights. Finally, the GPS announced, you have arrived at your destination on the right. I stopped the car and peered out the window. There was still no sign of a house or even a mailbox with addresses. Just more dark trees looming over the road. This had to be some kind of joke. But I had already come this far, so I wasn't leaving until I at least tried to find the place. I put my flashers on and carefully stepped out, pizza still in hand. Hello, I called out. Delivery for Victoria Road. No answer except the whistling wind through the trees. Then I noticed a narrow dirt path barely visible leading into the woods. Maybe the house was set back from the main road. I hesitated, thinking this was probably not a good idea, but that feeling in my gut drew me towards the path. I walked slowly, one hand holding the pizza box while the other shined a flashlight ahead. The path twisted deeper into the dark forest. I glanced back nervously at my car still sitting on the roadside, now barely visible. I almost turned back, but finally spotted a faint glow through the trees up ahead. Pushing through some branches, I came upon a run-down shack lit only by a single bare bulb above the door. This couldn't be the right place, could it? Against my better judgment, I walked up the creaky steps and knocked on the weathered wooden door. Again, no answer. I was just about to leave the pizza on the porch and hightail it out of there when the door slowly creaked open. A woman poked her head out, her face obscured by stringy hair. Did someone order a pizza? I asked hesitantly. She nodded silently. I told her the total, hoping she would just hand me some cash so I could leave. But instead, she grabbed my arm and pulled me inside. I stumbled into a filthy living room, littered with piles of trash. The windows were covered with blankets and old newspapers. There wasn't any furniture, just stained carpets and piles of plastic bags. Hey, I really can't come in. I have other deliveries to take, I said, trying not to breathe in the putrid smell permeating the room. The woman said nothing, just shuffled over to a far corner. She picked up a small lockbox and brought it back to me. Inside were stacks of $20 bills. She handed me a few. This should cover the pizza. You can keep the change, honey. Her voice was raspy, like she hadn't spoken to anyone in a long time. I wanted to get out of there immediately, but figured I should at least confirm it was enough money. As I counted the bills, the woman snatched the pizza box from my hands. 
She opened it up and grabbed a slice, chewing it ravenously. Grease dripped down her chin. She smiled at me, revealing a mouth full of blackened and missing teeth. Oh, I should really get going. Enjoy your pizza, I said, slowly backing towards the door. Just as I grabbed the handle, I heard a loud thump come from the back room, followed by what sounded like chains being dragged across a concrete floor. The hairs on my neck stood up as I whipped my head around. What was that? I asked the woman. Oh, nothing, dear. That's just my son. He gets hungry, too, sometimes. She licked her fingers, still focused on devouring the pizza. My heart started racing. I needed to get out of there right away. The woman seemed suddenly unstable, her eyes wild and darting around the room. She blocked my path to the front door, clutching the half-eaten pizza slice tightly. I glanced to my right and spotted another door leading to what I assumed was the kitchen. Making a split-second decision, I dashed towards it. The woman screamed at me to stop, but I pulled the door open and ran through. The kitchen was just as much of a mess every surface piled high with garbage. I frantically pushed through a back door leading outside. Bursting out into the night air, I found myself running through a massive junkyard. The shack was surrounded by acres and acres and acres of smashed cars, worn tires, and other unidentifiable debris. I stumble over broken glass and rusted car parts, desperate to make it back to the trail leading to my car. Glancing back, I saw the front door of the shack fly open as the woman ran outside screaming. She was pursuing me into the junkyard. I ducked behind a stack of cars, scraping my leg on the jagged metal. The woman wandered through the junk piles, peering into them as if searching for me. Come back, sweetie. I just want to share our pizza with you. Her guttural yelling echoed through the junkyard. Staying low, I crawl on my hands and knees over bits of broken machinery and shredded tires. Finally, I reach the dirt path into the woods. The woman still hadn't spotted me. I jumped up and sprinted down the trail as fast I could. Her enraged screams faded behind me. Bursting back out onto Victoria Road, I saw my car sitting there dark and silent. I jumped in. My hands shaking so badly I could barely get the key in the ignition. The car roared to life, and I floored it down the road, kicking up dust behind me. As I drove away, I stared in my rearview mirror, half expecting to see the woman chasing behind. But the road remained empty. I sped all the way back into town, running red lights and stop signs. Only when I reached the familiar main street did I finally start to breathe normally again. I pulled up to the pizza shop, still trying to process everything that had happened. My co-workers asked me about the weird delivery, but I just shook my head, unable to explain it. I never told anyone the full story of what happened that night on Victoria Road. The images of that rundown shack and the creepy woman still give me nightmares. I quit my delivery job the next day. Driving around the rural roads at night always filled me with dread after that. I feared I would catch another delivery out on Victoria Road, and that the next driver may not make it back to tell their story. So I decided to play it safe and find a nice, boring office job. But I'll always wonder about that night. Who was the woman? What was making that noise in the back room? Some questions are better left unanswered. It was a Friday night like any other. I had just gotten home from a long day at the office and didn't feel like cooking, so I decided to order a pizza for delivery. As I browsed the various pizza joints websites, Big Rico's Pizza Joints websites, Big Rico's Pizza caught my eye. I had never tried them before, but their menu looked appetizing. I placed an order for a large pepperoni and mushroom pizza and kicked back on the couch to wait. About 45 minutes later, I heard a knock at the door. When I opened it, a tall, skinny man with greasy hair and pitted skin stood there holding my pizza. He looked to be in his mid-forties and had an unsettling grin on his face. One large pepperoni and mushroom? He asked in a scratchy voice. Yep, that's me, I reply, grabbing some cash to pay for the pizza. 
As I handed him the money, he continued to stand there staring at me intently. His eyes seemed to bore right through me. Aren't you going to give me my pizza? I ask after an awkward pause. Oh, of course. Sorry about that, he said with a chuckle. He handed me the box and I noticed his hands were caked in dirt and what looked like dried blood under his fingernails. I mumble a quick thanks and close the door, making sure to lock it behind me. His bizarre behavior had creeped me out. I tried brushing it off as I sat down to enjoy the pizza, but I couldn't shake the uneasy feeling in my gut. Over the next few weeks, I noticed that same delivery driver showed up every time I ordered from Big Rico's Pizza, even when I ordered at different times of the day. His manner was always odd, staring too long, smiling too wide, and laughing at inappropriate times. One night, I decided to order delivery from a different pizza place across town, just to avoid another encounter with the strange driver from Big Rico's. Around 9 p.m., there was a knock at my door. I looked through the peephole and was filled with dread when I saw the familiar lanky figure standing on my porch. Slowly, I opened the door with the chain lock still attached. Can I help you? I asked nervously. Aren't you going to invite me in for a slice? He replied with a sinister grin. My heart pounded in my chest. I think you have the wrong house. I didn't order anything from Big Rico's tonight. The man leaned in close to the small opening in the door, his hot breath fogging up the people. Oh, I know you didn't, but I wanted to stop by and see you anyway. We have unfinished business, you and I. I swiftly slammed the door shut and locked it. My hands were shaking and my mind was racing. How did he know where I lived? Why was he so obsessed with me? I realized I needed to take action before things got even more out of hand. I called Big Rico's to complain and told them I didn't want that specific driver delivering to my house anymore. They were apologetic and assured me I wouldn't see him again. A few days went by without incident. But late one night, I awoke to the sound of creaking floorboards. I bolted upright in bed, listening intently. The noise stopped, but now I detected the faint yet familiar smell of dirt mixed with what seemed like rotting meat. Heart pounding, I crept slowly from my bedroom into the hallway. That's when I saw him, the delivery driver, standing completely still at the end of the hall, his face obscured in shadow. In a split second, he sprinted towards me his lanky form seeming to glide rapidly along the wooden floor. I let out a scream and slammed my bedroom door shut, locking it just as his body crashed against it from the other side. I could hear his ragged breathing just inches away as he clawed violently at the door. Let me in. We need to finish what we started, he growled. I cowered in the corner of my room, dialing 911 with trembling fingers. Within minutes, I heard sirens approaching as he continued to scramble at my door. Finally, the commotion and noises faded away as the police arrested the man. Later, I found out that the deranged pizza delivery driver had become obsessed with me after that first delivery. He had pieced together my name and address from my payment information. The police discovered human remains in his car and residence once they apprehended him. He had been stalking me for weeks, hoping for the right moment to attack. I still feel ill when I think about how close I came to being another one of his victims. I eventually move out of that apartment to escape the horrible memories attached to it. To this day, I still get anxious any time there's an unexpected knock or sound at my door. That terrifying encounter with the deviant pizza delivery man will haunt me forever. So to anyone reading this, be cautious when you don't recognize the person delivering your food. You never know what darkness might be lurking behind that friendly smile.